Well, good morning, Walden Church. You know, as I was thinking about uh, this past week and what to talk about, I decided I could share a little bit with you about just my own life, my own rhythm, what's going on. You know, I decided that no matter how I live throughout the rest of the school year, by the time I get to the summer, I just feel tired. And now, and you think to yourself, man, if only I had an extra hour to the day. You ever gotten to the end of your day and just wondered, where did all the time go? You know, you, you wonder if you even accomplished anything. Am I, do I spend my day being more than just an employee or more than just a chauffeur or more than just a maid or a cook? We live in a rat race, don't we? The motto of life is go for it. We have fast food, quick print shops, faster and faster computers, express oil changes, one hour photos, instant coffee. We have microwaves, overnight delivery, express mail, instant messenger, drive through restaurants, drive through chemists, drive through drugstores, mobile phones so I can talk to somebody right now. We eat fast food and then we want to lose weight fast. We see our society moving at 100 miles per hour and we think it's good for us. Busy is the hallmark of our lives and as a result, we're tired. You ever get home from vacation and feel like you need a vacation? Why is that? Why do we seem to run through life at a breakneck speed? How come we never stop? Because I have this feeling that if I stop, then somebody else will get ahead of me. So we, I just keep going. I continue at a pace that I can't live with. I live at a rhythm that's not sustainable. And we commit to another committee. I sign my kid up for another team or another after school activity. I join another group. I take on a bigger project at work. All good things, but I'm not getting any rest. There's a story of a lady who came to our pastor a little angry and she had finally caught up with him and she said, I, I called you all morning at the church. I dropped by to see you in the afternoon on Tuesday and you weren't there. And the minister said, I'm sorry, but Tuesday is my day off. She said, your day off? I'll have you know that the devil never takes a day off. The pastor said, yeah, you're absolutely right. And if I did the same thing, I would become just like him. We read Psalm 4610 where we are told to be still and know that he is God. And we think that that's nice, but that's not possible. So we just keep going. Have you ever wondered why you don't feel connected to God? Like maybe God's far away or it's God that's out of touch? Why is it that everyone else seems to hear from God, but I can't seem to figure it out? I think one of the main reasons that we feel like we do is because we've got out of rhythm of what God has designed. You know, if you look at the first chapter of Genesis, at the very beginning of the Bible, we see this rhythm. God creates the world. He has a different uh, creation for every single day. And then after six days, he rests. Genesis 2, 3 says God made the seventh day holy, which means he sets it apart. It's different from every other day. He set it apart because he rested on it. Then you go all the way to the book of Exodus. The nation of Israel spends 400 years as slaves in Egypt. And after they come out of Egypt, God reminds them, you have a rhythm that you live by. And he gives them 10 commandments. And one of those commandments is about rest. Exodus 20 verse eight says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to you, the Lord your God, and on it you shall do no work. And then in verse 11, God reminds them of creation. He says, for in six days, God made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, God blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy, set apart. And then the next thing that takes place in their history is so incredible. The religious leaders in the Jewish nation, they set up laws about the 10 commandments. God gave the nation of Israel 10. 10 commandments. But to keep the people from breaking those commandments, the priests set up another 613 laws so that they wouldn't break 10. So then God says, don't work on the Sabbath. They ask themselves, well, what exactly is work? How do you define work? What is work? 
how far can you walk before it's work? You can't walk a mile, can't cook, can't do this, can't do that. And so what God created to bring freedom and to bring rest, the religious leaders turned into a burden. It's a good thing we don't live like that anymore. But then in Leviticus 25, God gives them a new rhythm. It's called the Sabbath year, or it's the year of Jubilee. To go along with Sabbath day, God tells them to work the land for six years, and then on the seventh year, that is a Sabbath year, where they allow the land to rest, and then they live off the blessing that God has already provided them with. The year of Jubilee was to be every 50 years. So they would have two years of Sabbath years by the time the year of Jubilee rolled around. Can you imagine? I mean, here's a God who brings them out of Egypt, took care of them for 40 years in the wilderness. Normally, that would have taken one strong man 11 days to go that distance. It takes them 40 years because of how little they trusted God and how little they trusted in themselves. And you know the sad thing about the year of Jubilee? They never practiced it. What about today? I mean, can you imagine resting for an entire day or for an entire year? Do you think it's even possible to rest in today's world? I mean, prolonged stress and worry and anxiety and fear, lack of peace, it breaks us down physically, breaks us down mentally. Research shows that under stress, the body and the mind, they work overtime. You know, our energy burns at a higher rate, our respiration uh, is at a higher rate, our blood pressure goes up, even our body temperature goes up, and our immune system breaks down. You know, it's been calculated that between 75 and 90% of all doctor visits are stress-related. The word stress, it's from the Latin word which means to be drawn tight. You know, according to Greek legend in ancient Athens, a man noticed the great storyteller Aesop playing childish games with little boys in the street. And he laughed and he made fun of Aesop and asked him why he was wasting time on such frivolous activity. Aesop responded by picking up a bow and he loosened its strings and he placed it on the ground. And then he said to the Athenian, now answer the riddle if you can. Tell me what the unstrung bow means. The man looked at it for several moments, but had no idea what point Aesop was trying to make. And so Aesop explained, if you keep a bow always bent, it'll break eventually. But if you let it go slack, it'll be more fit for when you want to use it. And I'm sure that some of us right this very moment feel drawn tight, emotionally, physically. You know, this year I turned 56, and this is the first year I began taking a little small pill every day for stress. So as we talk about finding rest, I would bet that there are some of you who are thinking, hey, I push hard, I play hard, I work hard. I don't need a rest. I'm fine. You have been grinding it out. You work extra hours, you reach further to get that next promotion, to get that raise, or just, just keep your family's head above water. Maybe for you, the whole concept of rest feels weak, right? It seems passive. It seems complacent. People who need rest are quitters. They can't take it. If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. So what does Jesus have to say about this? He says in Matthew 11, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to read that same passage to you, but this time paraphrased from a modern English Bible. It says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. I love that phrase, the unforced rhythms of grace. That's what rest is. It's grace. 
And if you break this passage into a single statement there, I think it says, being with Jesus leads you to rest. Abraham Joshua Herschel, who is a great Jewish writer, he said, the Sabbath gives the world the energy it needs to exist for another six days. When Jesus says, come to me all who are weary, the Greek word literally means to struggle, to toil. It means self-effort. I mean, think about these past few weeks. How hard have you been pushing yourself? Whether at work or home or at school, Think about how crazy it's been shuttling kids around, perhaps taking care of aging parents or siblings or getting ready to go back to school or the, the storm or the power outage, a, a mass shooting involved the president. We hope for peace, but instead we have pandemonium. We hope for rest, but we don't feel restful. I mean, think about your daily life, the early mornings, the late nights, often because you have to but they are taking a toil on you. And you just are grinding it out, simply trying to keep up. Are you getting enough sleep? You know, sleepness and insomnia affects 70 million Americans. In fact, 38,000 deaths are attributed each year to sleeplessness. 60%, 64% of all teens in school blame sleeplessness on poor school performance. The most severe cases occur between ages 30 and 40, and 50% of the over 65 population suffer from insomnia. In fact, I would guess that if I stopped talking right now, turned off the lights, put on some quiet music, you would probably fall right to sleep. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Jesus talks about the weary, but the other word he used is burden. The word for burden means to be overloaded. The picture that Jesus is painting is of a person who has so much heaped upon them they can't take anymore. You know, they're living at their limit. Every step forward makes them feel more tired until it becomes impossible to move. What is heaped up on your back? Rising inflation, healthcare, unity, crime, the deficit, declining morality, immigration, War, just to name a few. The list goes on and on, and even just reading that list, we feel heavier and heavier, don't we? So how do we experience all that God wants us to experience? How do we experience the rest and the rhythm that God designed for us to experience? It's hard to answer that simply because I'm sure it's different for everyone. So maybe I don't have a nice, tidy, one-step answer that fits all. But here's what I do know. I'm positive that I will be less stressed and carry less of a burden and find more rest pursuing the life and the will of God and chasing after his desires and not my own. The world does not have my best interest at heart. The world sees me as a battery. It's gonna use me up for all the energy I can give it. And when my energy is gone, it'll discard me without a thought. So I need to find more ways to implement Sabbath. To not just to rest, but to recharge. You know, I, 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 I need rest. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is take a nap. Do you know why I think slowing down is so hard for us? Because we're doers, right? We're people who get things done. We have lists so that at the end of the day, we know how much we all did. And I don't have time to stop. Plus, we're also defined by what we do. Hey, good to meet you, John, what do you do? I'm an architect. Doing is who we are. Who am I if I'm not doing? Benjamin Franklin said, there'll be plenty of time to sleep when you're dead. Who has the time to take a break? I don't. Do you wanna see my to-do list? Remember when we spoke a week ago about finding time? What did we say? We never have enough time to, and we always want more time. And we say that, right? There's never enough time in a day. If only I had one more hour. Do you know what you would do if you actually had another hour in a day? You would add something else to your schedule. You would sign up for something else. You would make another commitment. In other words, 
you still would not rest. So maybe the answer isn't that you need more hours in a day. Maybe the answer is you need less tasks in a day. Maybe in your life you need to cut something out. Maybe you need to stop pursuing some of the things that you are pursuing. But why is it so hard to say no to new projects? Why is it so hard to slow down and take a break? I think it has to do with trust, right? Psalm 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God. That's another way of saying slow down and trust that God will take care of things. I know you look at your to-do list as your list and your tasks. After all, I mean, if you don't do them, who will? But when we rest, when we take a break, we are telling God that we trust him to take care of us. Psalm 37 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord, trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Proverbs 3, 6 says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. That's what God's saying. Come to me, be with me, take a break, rest, let me worry about your problems for you, let me take care of you, let me be the parent and you be the child. If only it was that easy. If only we could slip out of our busy schedules, away from the strain and the anxiety and the hurry. If only we could know the peace of God, have all the stress slip away, and rest in the knowledge that Jesus is Lord. But we can. We really can. We can know the reality of this rest every day. Henry Nouwen writes about prayer in his book, The Way of the Heart. And he says that the early church fathers wrote that we should pray always. And he says that the literal translation of these words is come to rest. That's a beautiful picture. When we come to pray, we're actually coming to rest. And he goes on to say that the rest we find in prayer has nothing to do with the absence of conflict or pain. It is a rest in God in the midst of a very intense daily struggle. See, the problem is still there. The challenges are still there. The busyness is even still there. There's meetings to attend, there's people to see, there's work to do, and we're in the eye of the storm. But in the middle of the eye of the storm, amongst all the activity and all the chaos, there can still be peace. We can still find tranquility. We can still find rest. We can find that rest in prayer. When we enter into a place of stillness, a place of solitude, a place of quiet, how? How do we do that? How do we enter into a state of rest in prayer? How do we come before God in the middle of our struggle and toil, in the midst of all the noise and all the commotion that fills our day? Pastor and author Warren Wearsby he writes, the ability to calm your soul and wait before God is one of the most difficult things in the Christian life. Our old nature is restless. The world around us is frantically in a hurry, but a restless heart usually leads to a reckless life. We need to come before God and be still. We need to pray in stillness, pray in quiet. How do you pray without filling up that time with a bunch of words. There's a story of an elderly lady who had been praying with all her might, but she complained that she never felt God's presence. Her pastor encouraged her, go to your room every day, and for 15 minutes, I want you to knit in the presence of God. And I forbid you to say a single word. You just knit and enjoy the peace and quiet. And the woman's first thought was, oh, that's nice. I get 15 minutes a day to do the thing I love without feeling guilty. And in time, she began to notice that the silence that she created by her knitting soon felt not like the absence of noise, but the presence of God. And as she continued her knitting, she discovered that at the heart of their silence, her silence 
it wasn't just stillness, but also peace. Practicing quietness revealed to her that she didn't need to actively find God, that he was there already in the stillness. Practicing quietness revealed the presence of God. This is what the psalmist means when they write, be still, (laughs) right? Be quiet and know that I am God. It means coming before God, away from the noise, away from the commotion, away from the busyness. Not with a shopping list, not with a list of demands, but with no words, with just a heart that's open to listen. Elijah goes to meet God at Horeb, the mountain of God, and it says that with a great and powerful wind that tore the mountains apart and shattered rocks, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper, and in the whisper, God spoke. And Elijah became refreshed and renewed and reinvigorated to meet the challenges of the day. It was in the silence The voice of God whispers, and we become refreshed. Be still, and know that I am God. In Psalm 131, it says, I have stilled my soul, hushed it like a weaned child, like a weaned child on its mother's lap, so is my soul within me. Our hearts are restless. They are whiplashed from one direction to the other by by the many voices we listen to. And we never find rest. But here's the secret. The best kept secret in all the world that few people know, even Christians. Your healing, your restoration, your rest is found in silence. Jesus says, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Notice in this passage of scripture, there are two action words, come and take. If I want to relieve my stress, I need to come to him and look at what he says. I will give you rest. Jesus did not say, come to me and I will give you more guilt, more stress, more worries. Jesus says, I will give you rest. That is a promise. He will give you rest if you come to him. But he also says, take my yoke upon me, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And then he goes on to say, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, we all carry burdens in life, right? We talked about those burdens. They're heavy. Some of them are awkward. Some of them hurt, but Jesus has promised that if we come to him and take his yoke, we will find rest for our souls. I don't know about you, but that is something I need. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Do you need rest? (laughs) Seek first the kingdom. Come to Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, give each one here the rest that they need. Rest in mind and rest in body. Free from stress and free from worry. Free from all the troubles and hang-ups of the world. May we learn to turn off the television, put down the newspaper, turn off the cell phone, and to take a walk, to enjoy pets, to enjoy children, to enjoy grandchildren, to enjoy family, to enjoy food and relaxation and sleep, to enjoy a summer's day, to enjoy a walk amidst the garden, to let the stresses go, to shake off the worries of this world, the cares of this world, they are not ours to carry. They are not our struggles. Help each one here to rest and to be still and know 
that you are parent, you are physician, you are Lord, you are King. We are disciple, we are son and daughter, we are child, and we place our trust in you. Remove this heavy burden. We lay it down at the foot of the cross. May we walk away and find rest. May our prayers be filled with more silence and more listening and more knowing that you are God. Amen. Hey, thanks for coming out and worshiping with us today. Of course, I'd remind you that we are here uh, we are here in Montgomery, Texas. We have a church called Walden Community Church. We're on Walden Road. We have two services, one at 9.30 and one at 11. Please find the time and the hour that works the best for you and your family. We want to be the church where you live. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.